You know, if I actually had a budget, I could probably make it look like a ghost was moving this thing. Ooh, spooky. It's night number eight of our 11 nights of Halloween. This is the type of lantern I imagine a lighthouse keeper would carry. I do like lighthouses, but they can be a bit creepy. Could you imagine what it would be like to be trapped inside one? That's what tonight's story is about. I do hope you enjoy. Oh, thank God. It's the Coast Guard. They must have seen the fire. You did it, Trevor. You saved me. Let me start at the beginning. My name is Devin. My friend Trevor and I came to this lighthouse 11 days ago on his boat. The lighthouse has been inoperable since the 1960s. Apparently it's also haunted. Trevor and I came here hoping to make a small documentary out of a fun ghost hunt. Maybe make it into a viral video or something, if we happen to catch anything spooky on camera. That was the plan at least. We packed a couple night vision cameras, a small weather radio, snacks, and a few bottles of water. This was supposed to be a one night thing. When we arrived it was already getting dark and the wind was picking up. The platform and the small staircase leading up to the lighthouse doorway was already several inches underwater. I quickly tied the boat off to a severely rusted cleat, and we rushed to get inside just as the first crackle of thunder came overhead. Trevor gave me a quick high five and a smile as he shut the metal door behind us and said, Let's catch us some ghosts. We had barely set up one camera at the top of the stairs when the wind started howling through the broken windows of the lighthouse, along with a heavy rainfall that wrapped against the metal stairs like gunfire. A quick listen of the weather radio confirmed a large thunderstorm had triggered high winds and a tornado watch. The storm raged on throughout the night, our clothes soaking wet from the rainfall. By 5 a.m., the water had calmed long enough for us to head outside, hopefully to say goodbye to this place and start the long boat ride back to land. To my horror, the boat was gone. During the storm, the rusty cleat had broken under the tension of the boat line, and with both of our phones on the boat, we had no communication with the outside world. Swimming back wasn't an option either. The rocks that surrounded the base of the lighthouse would be a death sentence if even one rogue wave pushed us back if we tried to swim to safety. We were trapped. That first full day there was spent waving our jackets over our heads on top of the lighthouse, hoping somebody would see. We also rationed out the small snacks and water, and kept a close listen to the weather radio, since summer storms were common. Neither of us wanted to risk being outside if one should pop up suddenly, if not for fear of being knocked into the water by wind and waves, then certainly for the possibility of being struck by lightning. This went on for days. By day seven, we were out of food. Not that we had much to begin with. We had taken the empty bottles of water and tried to catch rainwater with them. When the wind blew the bottles into the water, we resorted to standing outside in the rain and simply soaking our clothes before wringing them out and drinking the water. By day 10, Trevor and I made a deal. If either of us died here, the other would need to keep trying to get help. I hadn't even thought of it earlier, but what about a signal fire? My cigarettes were on the boat, but I had one book of damp matches in my back pocket that I had forgotten about. I looked at Trevor and said, I have an idea. We need something, like a candle to signal for help. A very large candle that can burn for a long time. We can use some clothing as a wick. We just need something to slow the burning down, like wax. Or fat. Trevor was my best friend. He saved my life this morning. I felt terrible killing him and burning him. But we did agree that at least one of us needed to live. 